Hello, good evening everyone. Myself, Mansi Shah, working as a project officer under the EPULS program at Center for Environment Education based in Ahmedabad. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the annual felicitation ceremony of Eco Schools and YRE Program India. The webinar is being organized by the Center for Environment Education, a national institute environmental awareness. CE develops innovative programs and is committed to ensure that environmental education leads to action-based learning for sustainable development. Moving ahead, these are the few housekeeping rules that we request you all to follow. The entire session is being recorded and is scheduled to one and a half hour. This is a webinar mode, so only panelists will be speaking today. You can post your questions in the chat box or Q&A session. We request you to not to put unnecessary messages in the chat box. The webinar is recording and will be soon uploaded to our all social media handles and YouTube channel. Moving further, we take immense pride in introducing our programs, namely the Eco Schools program and the Young Reporters of the Environment program that follow extensive and revolutionary way of imparting environment education. To introduce this program, I would like to invite Ms. Khushbu Shah, Program Coordinator of international program called Eco Schools and Young Reporters for the Environment India. She has more than nine years of experience in providing sustainable environment education, quality education, and behavioral change education. She also works with many government bodies and national, national and international NGOs. Welcome, ma'am. The floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you, Mansi. And good evening and namaste to everyone. Uh, I'm just going to brief you about the Eco School program and the Young Reporters for the uh, Environment program. As you, I think, all might be know about the Eco School program and YRE program, both have started in 2015 in India. Both of the program are international program and uh, which is collaborated with the Foundation for Environmental Education, which is in Denmark, Copenhagen. And CE is a national operator for both the program. Uh, if I'm talking about the Eco School program in a briefly way, so it is deals with the uh, grade one to five standard students. And right now we have a 130 schools on, our, on board and it aims to empower and provide excellence opportunity to learn, to explore, to investigate the local environmental issues and which are starting from the schools, homes and the community. So Eco School program is based with the seven step methodology and we have a five different themes under this program, which is the water based or biodiversity, healthy living and energy. So after the completion of the program, uh, we have like, if, if the schools are uh, on the exemplary work, then Eco School are awarded with the green flag, which is an international flag and the Henry flag, which is a national uh, flag. Apart from this, this year, we are also going to introduce one, one another category, which is we call as a green flag plus category for those schools who have already uh, working with the two, who have already got the two green flags, they are eligible for the green flag plus uh, award. So now talking about the YRE program, YRE deals with the grade six to college students and it aims to empower the young people for focusing on the SDG, which is the sustainable de development goal with 17 goals. So working under the 17 goals uh, for this program. And this is the, the program gives a platform to the articulate this uh, environmental issues through the medium of writing articles, photography and videography. Ultimately, it's an environmental focused journalism uh, uh, program. And under this program, youth could investigate the environmental problems and issue and identify the proper solution to reporting, documentation and uh, videography. So both the program, for the, under the both program, we have also started a campaign, which we call as a little less campaign. It is a globally campaign. And in India, we are also introduced the first time a little less campaign with the rural schools, particularly with the Gujarat government, uh, uh, Gujarat government schools. So for this year, 2020, they are also going to acknowledge uh, in the next session. And uh, uh, yeah, both the program mission is to enhance understanding of the sustainable development in formal and non-formal way, especially with the schools. We are working with the schools, youth, even the non scout guide uh, uh, non-formal groups and the eco clubs as well so uh, next slide uh, now coming back to the i i think all i already covered about the our reason and mission we are also targeting with the national and local uh, bodies and our mission is to uh, enhance understanding about the sustainable development now coming back to the flow of the event today we have a Two uh, interns, uh, one is Miss Janvi Arora and uh, Miss Anushri Upadha as a moderator for entire event. 
Jangri is a currently pursuing the Bachelor of Commerce in the Banking and Finance from the Nirmai University, Ahmedabad. She is currently interning with the CEE under the Eco School program, where she has been able to solid, solidify her passion about the climate change also. She is also uh, uh, writing a draft for the climate change education booklet. And uh, we have also a second moderator, which is Anu, her name is Anushni, who is a recently did the biotechnology uh, graduate from the Simsa College, Gujarat. And Anushni is also uh, interning with the CEE under the Tight Turner Plastic Challenge. We are also going to uh, explain about the what exactly is Plastic Tight Turner Challenge in the next session. So yeah, I'm, I'm welcome to all of you. And Janri, now floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for that wonderful introduction. It gives me immense pleasure to be your moderator for this evening. Moving forward, this evening we have Shri Kartike Sarabhai, sir, with us. It is a pleasure to introduce him. Sir is one of the world's leading environmental educators and a dedicated community builder. He is the founder and the director and the director of the Center for Environment Education. He has served on many committees set up by the Ministry of Environment and Forest of the Government of India, primarily focusing on the greening of India's formal education, education system and initiatives for biodiversity education. As an environmentalist, he is associated with several government organizations and NGOs and has been a delegate member representing India at several international conferences and discussions. Once again, thank you so much, sir, for taking the time to be with her, be here with us today. Now, without wasting a single minute, I would like to welcome him. We welcome you, sir, and the floor is all yours. Thank you, Janvi and uh, Kushbu, and welcome to uh, um, all the all the schools and all the members here. I'm glad I'm seeing Madhvi from Canada also joining us today. Uh, in this, the family is extensive. And it's wonderful to see everyone here. As uh, Kushpu has already explained, this is a program which uh, connects us uh, globally through the Foundation for Environmental Education, which is perhaps uh, um, one of the largest networks of schools uh, globally working on the environment field. And so what you do and the examples India sets are things which are shared widely and uh, uh, we are a good partner to this whole process, which is required now of transfor transforming, if you like, our societies, uh, looking at the fact that these crises are, are really now felt. When we started this program, many people didn't quite understand what environmental education was, or what is the environment, what are the crises. But today, I think the position is quite different. I think uh, climate change is a word which a lot of people use, understand. Uh, they might not know the full consequences of it, but certainly it is one of them. Uh, biodiversity and biodiversity loss is another priority area. And thirdly, pollution. And in that, we are looking both at air quality, we are looking at uh, plastic, specifically plastic waste. And these are the sort of campaigns which, which uh, many of you are exposed to. The, the handprint which you see on, in many of these symbols, many of you perhaps know what it is, but it is a truly Indian symbol which has gone global. It started off in a school in Hyderabad, which we were there we were working in 2005. In 2007, we uh, at a UNESCO international conference, it was shared with the world. And it was such a powerful concept. The powerful concept is that everyone, even while you are in school or you are in college, you can do something which makes a significant difference. I think that realization that we don't have to first finish all our education and then start doing something. You can do something while you are, be, while you are studying. And I don't, I don't think we can wait till we finish um, education and then only start impacting the world. And I think the young people's impact on the world is, is truly uh, commendable today. I think it's being recognized in all forums because climate change, biodiversity, all these are not, not issues which are to do with immediate changes only. They are things which will happen. People are talking about 2050, 2030. The world will change. If we don't do something, these are the times when 
it's many of you will be our age. Uh, and, and you will see that, yes, I started my work way back in 2022 when I, when I started doing this or that in your environment. Uh, and, and in climate change, for instance, we have to talk about mitigation, of course, where all of us work together and try and change things because we cannot do it on our own. But we also have to talk about adaptation because uh, whatever we do now, we are not going to be free from the impacts of, of climate change over the next several years. We are, we are seeing it every day. We are reading about it. There is a fire somewhere. There is a cyclone somewhere else. Temperatures are changing. Uh, temperatures in Europe and things are, are similar to temperatures we have in India. India and, and the world is having some of its hottest um, years now. That has an impact on cropping patterns. It has an impact on water. It has an impact on migration of, of, of various types of insects, birds, and other wildlife, which is connected with that crop because you have a disconnect. So these are things which many of you know about. But the interesting thing is that through joining both these programs, Eco Schools and Wiry, you are actually making a difference. And I think today is a day to celebrate that, to, to share with you and see how wonderfully all of you have done. Um, and, and, and to sort of celebrate that, to facilitate that uh, on, on the positive action which, which is taken. The Littlest campaign also uh, Kushbu mentioned, it is something which you almost feel ashamed of when we see much of India uh, today. There are some of the most magnificent heritage buildings. There are wonderful things to see. And then you see this all this uh, litter just lying there. And I think for many people who come from a different society, one of the first things they notice is in fact litter and it's gone into villages, unfortunately. And therefore, I think through our efforts, the Littlest campaign has also gone into rural areas especially in Gujarat, as Kushbu was saying initially, but hopefully again, we'll go all in there. I think from tomorrow, uh, there's a new plastic ban, which is, which is coming into place, I think, 1st of July. And I think that will make a difference. And I think all of us have to participate in that and support it. Uh, the buyer is, again, a very important thing because you need to know these stories need to go out. And not just the negative stories, but the positive stories of what people are doing. And I, I hope that many of the YRA pieces written by the young reporters will find their way into the press, into the popular media, into television, into others, because these stories do need to be, they do need to be said, told, and told in a good way. We all today, the interesting thing is just about everyone has a camera, which was never the case earlier, because all of our, our phones have a camera. And I think, therefore, video journalism or, and also photography journalism is all possible. So again, wishing you all all the best uh, for the whole year and the years to come and also today. And congratulations to all those who are being uh, felicitated today. And we look forward to a very strong partnership. And I'm sure that you are all going to be an important part in, in the transformation which we all need. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for addressing and inspiring our audience with your words of guidance, your input on transforming the way we think about climate change with the involvement of youth who can make a difference from such a young age was truly inspiring. Thank you so much, sir. Moving ahead, I would now like to introduce Ms. Madhvi Joshi Ma. Ma'am is a retired senior program director at, of CWE and has managed the youth programs a part of the urban programs in the areas of waste management, sustainable mobility and greening and leading the rural programs. She was also involved in sustainable livelihoods and water management. Ma'am has over 30 years of experience in designing, implementing and leading education and communication projects in the area of sustainable development. Thank you, ma'am, for joining us. The floor is all yours. Yeah, thank you so much. And um, it's been it's a pleasure to uh, 
to be a to have been a part of uh, eco schools and the young reporters for the environment programs right since its their inception and uh, also looking at the ways in which we could uh, strengthen every year um, engaging um, different strategies in which we could uh, uh, make it more uh, meaningful for uh, the young people like yourselves and you know, the schools and the university uh, professors who have who have always been a part of um, uh, the the program and uh, uh, i think one of the biggest uh, uh, positive uh, aspects of eco schools and the young reporters is is the methodologies that are that are that uh, provide young uh, youth with um, uh, the plat not just the platform but also the means in by which to make you know change possible uh, at at their own uh, level in their in their schools in their homes uh, but also around uh, influence um, you know the uh, the others who are uh, around them not their peers and also the decision makers uh, at their various levels so i think it is a very powerful uh, these uh, programs and uh it has the potential to be able to actually bring about um, you know changes at at different uh, in different ways and i think it starts with oneself and where i uh, it's important to understand that when we are engaged in an environmental education program unless you we ourselves are passionate about the cause and uh, want to make um, you know changes happen um we will not be able to influence others so that's the basic the first thing that i think the eco schools and yre insists that we would we expect that young people actually internalize what we are talking about the the second thing is also about uh, learning how to make those changes happen a lot of times i think we feel um very motivated enthusiastic uh, uh, to students and teachers but sometimes there are they struggle in terms of okay we we know that there is a problem of pollution what do we do about it how do we make the change happen is there any solution to say a certain issue and that is where um, these 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 this whole exploration that uh, the eco schools and yre programs makes uh, through these various steps that they are being followed i think that is where you can um, actually find those solutions and and learn Uh, how to make those um, um, or implement those solutions, and that's very critical because unless you see change happen, um, it it doesn't actually you know it doesn't uh, inspire the others as well. So th- there is a demonstrable change that uh, that can be brought about by both the eco schools and especially the YRE can uh, then take it forward through the um, creative means and honing creative skills among young people. to become opinion leaders and inspire and motivate others and as kartik bhai said that it's important that it the stories get told and uh, through various means we have tried to do that one is of course we've done um uh, research through the eco schools and trying to understand what strategy works where are the ways in which what are the ways in which we can strengthen these programs the um, the other is through connecting to media uh, and was trying to see where where we can publish stories uh, done by the young reporters for the environment third is to conducting workshops in the, uh, for uh, uh, students who are uh, interested in le- say writing articles taking uh, learning about photography um so these are two areas we have uh, uh, already conducted workshops but there are plans in by which we will uh, we would like to really take forward um uh, using uh, the creative means to not just learn skills but also understand about what kind of uh, stories one can tell through these media and that is the most important thing learning how to tell stories um uh, and uh, also ensuring that your action is seen uh, and demonstrated so i i think uh, one of the other things is the uh, over a Until the 2030, the the entire strategy is going to focus, as Kartik Bhai said, on pollution, biodiversity, and climate change. And these are the three critical areas that the planet today uh, is facing, and also they are interconnected. And through various ways, uh, we would uh, encourage all of you to to take it beyond just the words pollution, biodiversity, and climate change. 
but try and understand what what these mean and we and the team um is also i'm sure will be able to help in terms of uh, teasing these terms further and taking taking them you know getting into the details of how um what are the kinds of issues that we can at this at our level deal with when we are talking about whether there be the lifestyle changes or they just to do with circular economy or they just to do with the uh, you know biodiversity loss and invasive species so a lot of uh, detailing um is is um, in terms of understanding of each of these issues uh, will need to be also done and we look forward to um, a very productive uh, year again this year and uh, we will be ambitious as always and um, all the best to the team and thanks for uh, having me today thank you so much thank you so much ma'am for joining us today and for your words of encouragement you're shedding light on the issue of taking action as part of our eco schools and wiry program was truly inspiration thank you ma'am moving forward we have miss titi r kanojia ma'am ma'am is the senior program director at cwe india leading the school programs at the center involving various formal and non formal initiatives in the field of environmental education and sustainable development for schools she has worked with a variety of stakeholders including teachers school students youth academics community etc focusing on environment education in school systems and capacity building with over 23 years of experience her current interest includes the rule of positive action in education in achieving the sustainable development goals welcome preeti ma'am and the floor is all yours i think uh, ma'am just message me uh, she lost her connection we can move with the next session all right everyone uh, so due to some technical issues preeti ma'am couldn't be here with us today so now moving on to the next part of our session it's time to switch things up and play a fun filled task so to boost your energy for that we have one fun learning activity designed for the day which will be introduced by mr shreya sajeevan over to you sir thank you janvi hello everyone now it's time for some fun activity which is click share and win this activity is all about sustainable living and lifestyles sustainable living means prior prioritizing the use of natural as well as renewable source for example finding creative ways uh, growing your own herbs and vegetables zero waste and so there are many other ways too in this activity you need to identify those things being at your home and have to share with us about how much sustainable lifestyle you are following to participate in this fun learning activity you have to follow three basic rules number 1 click a selfie of whatever you wish to show us about your sustainable lifestyle second follow us on social media handles like so uh, school india as well as yari india post it on your social media with a caption and tag us on social media the winners will be announced on the next day by the way the deadline to the sub uh, submit the entries is the evening today evening before 7 pm lastly the best three entries will be declared as winners and will receive exact exciting prizes so i'm sure you all are excited about this activity and all the very best thank you thank you shreyas for briefing about the activity everyone make sure to participate and follow all the rules uh and winners will receive uh, exciting prizes from our side so uh, we are waiting for your entries and please make sure you submit your entries before 7 pm today moving ahead finally we have reached to that part of the evening that we all were waiting for so for the year 2021 22 we received more than 30 green flag applications and among them 
we have selected the best seven schools for the international green flag application award and uh, uh, for and 12 schools for handprint flag award for the selected themes in spite of pandemic and hybrid schooling system the school continued to show positive handprint actions with unmatched enthusiasm towards environment awareness in such a crisis we highly appreciate your action towards finding solution in the field of environmental education and sustainability uh, first let's look at the schools who have received green flag awards for that we have a video. Eco Schools Program congratulate all the participating schools for their extraordinary performance and joining helping hand in sustaining this world. Let me all together congratulate the schools who have earned an international green flag certification for the year 2021 to 24. And here are the winners. My congratulation to all the winning schools for their exceptional performance throughout the year. Next, we have handprint flag awards for those who gave a near standard exemplary performance in the selected things. Evaluation of our awardees this year was a challenge since their performance was notably exceptional. Here is the list of schools which have received the handprint flag awards. Eco schools program schools congratulates all the handprint flag awards for the selected teams. A big congratulation to all the participating schools, uh, mentors, members, and students. Moving ahead. We have a new category announced by Khushbu Mem already that is Green Flag Plus Eligible School. So now you all might be wondering about this new. Why uh, we have to show handprint flag about winners? I think it's because. Yeah, yeah. there is some connection issue. Uh, yes. Just a moment. Yes, it's visible now. Yeah, so uh, do I need to repeat this? Yes, please. Okay, so uh, we have handprint flag awards for those who have nearly standard exceptional performance in their selected themes. Evaluation of the awardees this year was a challenge since their performance was notably exceptional. So here is a list of schools which have received the handprint flag award. A big congratulation to all the participating schools, mentors, principals, and students. Moving ahead, we have a new category this year, Green Flag School. So you all might be wondering about this new category of award, right? So let's understand about let's understand about our newly introduced award category. As mentioned earlier, the Green Flag Plus is a newly introduced award category under the Eco Schools program. It is given to the schools. It is given to the schools who have performed exceptionally throughout the all years of engagement, achieved more than two handprint green flag awards, as well as continued their engagement for more than six to eight years. There are two green flag plus, which is one is Nand Vidya Niketan School, Jamnagar, Gujarat, and second is Shri Vashish Vidyalaya, Surat, Gujarat. I extend my highest congratulations to both the schools for this achievement. Uh, and I would like to congratulate all the schools uh, who have worked uh, under the program Letterless campaign and uh, we have already announced winners of the LLC. So congratulations to all the principal, fellows, students and teachers who have worked really hard to achieve it for this achievement. Moving ahead. 
we have a uh, announcement banner announcement of the young reporters for the environment i would like to invite mr shreyas over to you shreyas thank you mansi and a heartiest congratulation to all the winners of eco schools so here we come to the second part of felicitation ceremony where we will felicitate uh, firstly felicitate young reporters of yari program this year total we have received 150 entries for five categories among 150 we shortlisted 17 entries as yari national winners i'm honored to announce the national winners of five different categories of young reporters of the environment starting from photography campaign photo photo story for video reported article writing and international collaboration So next we have internationally shortlisted entries this year three uh, entries have been shortlisted at international level one in an article by kirti giamalani a burning globe and two photographs by michael cecil and shirley morjani respectively we are awaiting for the final result from national committee once again congratulate all national winners as well as shortlisted national winners Uh, uh and also a heartiest congratulation to shortlisted international winners thank you so much over to you janvi thank you sir and once again congratulations to all our eco school and yari winners moving on it gives me immense pleasure to introduce everyone to the young members of our team here at cwe pratyush sinha and arushi mathu who worked here has research interns Pratyush Sinha has a BA honors in geography from Shahid Bhagat Singh College Delhi University. Currently he is interning with the Ministry of External Affairs with the Government of India. He has interned with the Center for Environment Education as a research intern. Next up we have Arushi Mathu who is a fresh post graduate from the Terry School of Advanced Studies with a master's degree in sustainable development practice. with a bachelor's in economics honors from Miranda House Delhi University she has undertaken primary research for her master's thesis in the schools of Kamlapur village in Jastan where the eco schools program has been piloted through the little s campaign let us welcome both of our research interns beginning with pratyush please share your preliminary research experience with the eco schools program thank you ms janvi i extend my gratitude to the uh, ce for giving me a chance to uh, let let share my experience of working with ce so my uh, stand with uh, ce was for two months uh, was for uh, two months specifically from december 2021 to february uh, 2022 i interned under eco schools program india and i really uh, uh, like the aim of the program that it is very bottom up very place based and a holistic model of sustainability and uh, i would say it is very well suited to uh, the indian community at large so i worked on preparing an impact assessment report titled uh, seven step methodology a comprehensive assessment of its viability and impact in generating positive handled actions so for that i developed two questionnaires uh, which were actually tailored to the individual requirements and uh, so the goal of the study was to uh, understand how effective seven step methodology has been uh, in imparting sustainable uh, sustainability education to the students uh, how helpful it has been for the schools to facilitate 
and engage uh, parents, society, and the other members of the local community. So uh, in this uh, uh, stint, I was uh, mentored by Ms. Pusa and Ms. Mansi sir. I, I would just like to say that the association with them has been very rewarding. Uh, throughout the process, they assisted me whenever I needed guidance. Uh, more like, uh, other than a boss, they were like a mentor to me and guided me wherever required. So I was very fortunate because I have been placed in a project that actually interests me and the support and the care that I receive uh, is uh, beyond measure. Uh, their guidance and management have enhanced my teamwork and communication skills as well as provided me with uh, additional knowledge of various topics. So uh, they have been actually uh, very willing to help me in any way they can and they actually assisted me in a way that my academics don't suffer because I had my internals and uh, other classes going on while I was interning here. Uh, the, the two months, uh, I have learned much more than just work itself. Uh, the skills that I uh, gained through the internship, I, I carry it even today. And uh, uh, even after the internship, I, I am very much associated with CE. Uh, there are some random texts that, uh, uh, that I share with Mr. Kukusa and say, hey, what's up, what's going on? So uh, this, this was not a usual internship that we do. There is a connection. Um, uh, that connection is very much there. Uh, so this internship uh, was uh, uh, very flexible in a way because it actually focused on getting the work done instead of just uh, sitting sitting there and being there for the time and not being uh, productively engaged. Uh, I would say the entire internship uh, was a great experience and I am honored beyond measure that I have been selected for the same. Uh, it had been a great learning experience because it, it was learning by doing approach. And uh, I actually get to uh, learn the working dynamics of uh, an organization, uh, something which is actually very much associated with the uh, field that I am in. I am a student of geography and environment is something which uh, is uh, what I study. So in turning it uh, one of the best organization in the country, uh, it was definitely a, an amazing experience for me and uh, I definitely look forward to uh, engage with the organization uh, whenever uh, the time persists. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Over to uh, Ms. Adush. Thank you so much, Pradyush, for sharing your experience with us. Next up, we have Arushi. Please share your research experience with the Little Less campaign. Over to you, Arushi. Thank you so much, Andy. Um, I have to say that it's great to see the Eco School and the YRA community over here. And having worked closely with the Eco Schools program, I would first like to congratulate everyone who has been a part of it. And I hope that the learnings from such an engagement stay with uh, everyone who has been involved and inspire them to do better, especially uh, when you go beyond school. I completely agree with you, uh, Pratyush, for you know, with respect to the kind of atmosphere and the uh, environment he provided through uh, the internship. And I was very interested in the seven-step uh, methodology and the whole school approach of the program. And I connected with Center for Environment Education uh, to, uh, with Kushmu Ma'am and Mansi Ma'am uh, for conducting uh, primary research in some of the rural schools in Gujarat for my master's thesis. And the aim of my thesis was to um, address the approach of the Eco Schools program in contributing to experiential learning or what we understand as learning by doing in um, the domain of environmental education. So the program in rural areas is quite scattered. And this was the first time that um, the Eco Schools program had been introduced in 22 government schools of Gujarat in Jastan and Kalavad uh, Taluka through the Little Less campaign. And um, my experiences in one of the villages, Kamlapur, as uh, Mansima mentioned, um, and with the students of the three government schools there, was it was truly enriching. And um, so I worked with students of six to eight standards, and they were they were very enthusiastic. They were um, creative in sharing um, ideas, especially related to uh, management of litter, and especially the awareness that they had of environmental issues in their um, local uh, area which I feel is quite commendable for uh, such students uh, to have. And the commitment of the principals and the teachers and the entire community was also seen to be very crucial 
um, in ensuring effective implementation of the entire program and the whole school approach in general. Um, apart from that, I noticed that the teachers uh, from all the three schools had adopted very different methodologies in order to avoid rote learning and to make it more student-centric to catch their attention. And a few, I feel a few of the activities really struck me, um, more so for the impact that they entailed. For example, um, in one of the schools, um, the students had written postcards to their parents as part of informing and involving step of the methodology. Um, so they had informed their parents about the whole school approach, the um, issue of litter in uh, the village and the three hours. And I was pleasantly surprised to know that one of the girls, um, she was an eighth standard, and she went ahead and wrote a postcard to the Sarpanch of the village, um, telling him about, you know, this is the issue in Kamlapur village and how, um, you know, it would be great to have more waste collectors, to have more dustbins, which were completely absent in the village. And for a student of class eight to do that, especially in such a short period of time, inspired by an activity from the schools, I think that's a, a really great deal. And similarly with, um, with activities of, uh, for example, prepping compost pit and um, doing something, making something out of uh, these plastic bottles. The students also learned a lot from that in the sense that one of the boys um, I met in uh, these three schools, he had urged his father to make a compost pit on their own farm. And he had also urged him to uh, keep the plastic separate from the rest of the uh, waste and to, you know, tell him not to burn it. Um, so, you know, all of these, I understand there's a large um, gap, a large period of time that you require for a change in mindset and behavior. But with the eco-school approach, if the, effort, if the efforts are consistent and if, you know, this is the kind of learning that students are taking with even 45-day campaigns, I feel that's that speaks a lot about the program itself. And um, I also did a curriculum analysis, which told me that the books such as Joy of Learning for uh, all, all the three editions and the Littleness Lesson Plan for the teachers, they hold a lot of activity-based approaches, which also ease the burden of teachers about, aside from making it interesting for the students. And it can um, you know, really help in complementing with the syllabus and the activities that are prescribed. So after all the interviews that I've conducted, um, I feel that, you know, the strongest yet the most challenging step amongst the methodology was informing and involving and evaluation and monitoring. And I feel this is something that would also differ um, in urban and rural context as well as with private and government schools. So when the program expands, I got that, you know, this is something that would have to be very carefully crafted. And um, things like language barriers and digital divides would have to be taken into account, especially when it moves to the rural areas. Um, all in all, I feel that um, you know, even though all of this might be time consuming given all the socioeconomic factors, but with consistent and honest efforts from all the stakeholders, this can really go a long way. And I also, uh, one thing, you know, I understand that there are a lot of people on this webinar. So as you know, as a young sustainability, practitioner, I would just like to um, say that I understand that national and international recognition and certification is really important. It's very attractive and tempting. But at the same time, I would request, you know, students to not um, restrict themselves to that and to go beyond, um, you know, the incentives and understand the vision of uh, the program. And um, yes, so given the Little S campaign in rural areas, uh, like, I went to Jastan and I haven't seen Kalavat, but I would just like to take this platform to announce the category of winners. The first category, uh, National Be Best Waste Wise Handprint Award, um, goes to uh, Dhundoraji Prathmik Shala, Kalavat, Gujarat, and to Sri Kamla Taluka Shala in Jastan in Gujarat. Second category is of uh, national level runner up schools. Virpur Prathmik Shala, Kalavad Gujarat, Virpur Prathmik Shala, Kalavad Gujarat again, and uh, Sri Kamla Kanya Shala in Jastan. And the third category of National Best Mentor Award uh, is for rural Jastan and Kalavad team. Um, so Nitin sir and Pungapura team from Jastan and Premji sir and the entire team from Kalavad. Congratulations. And you have a lot of work for me as a researcher. And I hope you all be aage uh, jayega and baaki uh, logo ko bhi inspire karega. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Arushi, for sharing your experience with us.
Before we move forward, we have with us Ms. Preeti R. Kanojia, ma'am. Ma'am is the Senior Program Director at CWE India. She leads the school programs at the center involving various formal and non-formal initiatives in the field of environmental education and sustainable development. She has also worked with a variety of stakeholders, including teachers, students, youth, academics, the community, etc., focusing on environment education in school systems and capacity building. With over 23 years of experience, her current interest includes the role of positive actions in education in achieving the sustainable development goals. We welcome you, ma'am, and the floor is all yours. Thank you very much. And, uh... A warm uh, welcome and greetings to all the uh, members joining for, from the Eco School and YRE family. It's really a pleasure to actually get everyone together and celebrate this moment, the big celebration day it is. And it's really wonderful. So I would be just talking about how did we reach here? It's because we are celebrating a day where we are recognizing schools and uh, uh, st students who have done exceptionally well. So I'll just take you through uh, some of the things which goes uh, at the background when we are looking at what you have done over the during the year and what kind of activities you have taken up. So I'll just uh, share my screen. So uh, talking about the eco school program, uh, uh, already Katipai and Madhvi has talked about it that how, what is this whole program? So you all know that's a sustainable campus program, which is an international program. So when we say that focus is on sustainable campus where schools take part in this program and take up activities through seven step methodology and uh, try and see that there are uh, certain activities done where they can achieve becoming a sustainable campus. Here are a few glimpses of photographs of uh, eco schools taking action. So uh, how when, when we talk about action, it's all about, you can see in the logo also, it's about inspiring positive action, which is uh, symbolized through hand trend, which emerged from one of C's program, which we were doing in Andhra Pradesh with schools. And this 10 year old girl, Shrija from Hyderabad said that, why have to always talk about in the negative sense that, why do I, can't we take some positive uh, uh, action? So this hand print is, comes from her, uh, idea and then this idea became global when we this was launched during a UNESCO conference in 2007. So now this is an international symbol and many of the environmental education program has taken a leap that understanding that children have, have that power that they can make a difference and also inspire. So even some of the youth interns who were talking and even some of the teachers who have, whom we have been interacting with, they feel that this is a very powerful tool and symbol to help children to understand what they can, what kind of difference they can make. So it's basically, uh, uh, not only taking positive action, but becoming also change agents who can uh, not only take action themselves, but also inspire others in their family, in their neighborhood, in their in their, uh, their among their friends, and even in their campus. So this this is the overall core idea of what we when we say eco schools and wiring program that uh, we 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 encourage uh, youth and young children to. Uh, become part of this entire movement and then see that the message is passed on to the, uh, the entire society. So how does eco school uh, overall uh, eco school functions? Well, you have heard, must have heard about this whole school approach. So there are four components which are is very critical when we say you know, we 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 take up eco school program. So it's a combination of these C's, which is uh, talking about curriculum. So which is very important when we are talking about schools. And uh, it's also important that we look into what kind of culture is followed in the school. And then taking the entire campus. So you cannot work in just with the curriculum or uh, with the culture. It is also looking into how do we engage, how do we use campus as a tool to engage children, to educate them on about a lot of things, right? which is like applying knowledge. And then reaching out to society because schools are core to our society. So these are the four things which we, we try to achieve when we are saying that we are doing, we are, we are, we are taking up eco schools program. And similarly, the same philosophy applies to many of the programs which we are, have mentioned today uh, during the program. So what the, how does this work? So this uh, simple uh, 
uh, illustration, which is developed by UNESCO, uh, says it all that it's it's not about just creating, uh, following the uh, like using solar energy or uh, trying renewable resources or uh, following practices like having a kitchen garden or uh, using certain practices. It is about engaging children in the entire process. Like education is a key, is a core. So we always say, Katibai always says that education has to be a driver of change about whatever we are doing. So in the eco school program, if we are looking at taking action, it is very important that uh, children are engaged at every step. It's not that uh, school management decides that we want to do a rainwater harvesting and things, but it is a, a like democratic decided process where children are engaged and they understand why we are doing this. this and that's why that is how this handbread action can be taken from school to society. So this is uh, what we usually see when we look at the entire uh, this eco school program in a holistic manner. Now, uh, coming to the evaluation process. So, how, when we, we like schools uh, take up this uh, eco school activities, apply seven step methodology, and then uh, a report is submitted to us. And then there is a jury of eminent experts who uh, go through those reports and understand what the schools have done, what kind of uh, things they have done. So, what we try to see in those applications is like what is unique that school has done? Uh, has, have they connected? what are the environmental issues to the local concerns, uh, how, how it is, uh, the activities are done in a way that it, it fits into the system. Then what are the innovation done by school? And uh, like not only doing the activities in a, like just a routine manner, but also trying to see, bring some creativity, by bring, bringing some innovation in the program is the another thing which jury looks into then how things are integrated. Like we do say there is a seven step methodology, but sometimes it is done like a, um, or like we have to complete these seven steps. It's not like completing those seven steps. It's also about how do we integrate it in, into the system. Uh, we all also uh, try and see that in the reports, our schools are e able to see that it is not done as a one-time thing. Like uh, we have done an event, we have like uh, done an activity, but it is look, looking it into the holistic manner that each activity, each event leads into a, br a broader goal of the school as an eco school. And then also, uh, once you have done a uh, seven step process and a lot of activities, our uh, teachers, children, even entire school campus, are they able to connect the dots? So this is another thing which we try to see while we are uh, going through the reports and understand how schools are taking up eco school activities. Are they able to use sustainability lens? Because it's very important that we just not see the see things from the ecological angle. It's also how it uh, it has an economic relevance, how it has a connection to society. So all those things are uh, uh, are a, like are able to be translated or transacted in the classroom or through other activities. And also whatever activities are being done, uh, environmental education has to be in in the core of the uh, program and how schools are taking it as a long-term vision. But usually we say that it's an annual process, uh, school come and join the program and they submit report. So it's like a one year or two years, school are able to submit their application. But uh, do they have a long-term vision of becoming a, a true eco school? That is what a jury looks into and that is the evaluation process. In a similar manner, uh, talking about young reporters for environment, there are individual entries from students who actually look into different formats of journalism, especially for focusing on environment. So it's like photo, it's about writing articles. So when we look into those that uh, quite a similar criteria we follow, what is unique in the entry? What is, what is, what is so creative that uh, uh, angle that uh, entry has uh, uh, actually brought into? And then uh, is there a sustainability connection? Is there a positive action shown in the entry? So these are the things which we usually look into because you have uh, got to know about the results and uh, you now you understand like what are the things which we usually looking into when we uh, select uh, uh, these winners and i don't agree with the winners so i will tell you why because i feel this is a celebration of exemplary work done by schools and they these schools are basically uh, it's a proud moment not only for the schools but also for uh, CE, for CE and the associated institutions that this is uh, something like we have reached to a, a level where you can call as eco school and you have done really uh, uh, like on ground handprint action. So you have become today as a model or a lead school 
who are not only taking action at their own school level but also inspiring others to take hand foot action so with this i congratulate you all again and uh, best wishes from my side thank you so much thank you so much ma'am for joining us today and sharing your insightful thoughts on the eco schools and the yre program and inspiring the students for positive action along with inspiring others thank you so much ma'am now moving on to the next part of our session it is very heartwarming to see our eco schools and young reporters for the environment achieve such great milestones let us now gear up for more and more inspiration from our eco warriors we have with us here today we have ms anvesha tiwari from the eco schools program ms mohini arora from the young reporters for the environment program and ms chetna bharadwaj from both the eco schools and the yre program thank you so much for being here with us today first up we have anvesha tiwari uh her inspiration story that is coming from anvesha tiwari who is uh, a student from little flowers public school yamuna vihar she enthusiastically participated in all the activities of our eco schools program and spread awareness in the community about her learning and has brought behavioral changes with regards to environmental awareness so my first question to you is anvesha what changes have come into the school after implementing the eco schools program Ma'am, you have not audible properly. All right. So I'll say it again. My first question to you is: What changes have you seen in your school after implementing the Eco Schools program? We had Eco Club in our school for decades, but through implementations, how to save the environment started since. we adopted the eco school methodology example saving electricity use of solar cooker three hours for conserving resources eating healthy food installing bird nest and feeders segregation of waste and many more thank you moving on to my next question tell us about your learnings and experience from the eco schools program and how it helped you grow personally it has been a great experience we have become more careful and responsible in using water electricity planting trees segregation of waste i have i also have feed a personal waste and personal waste to personal connection with nature as the bird nest and bird feeder activities has taught us about who exists thank you anvesha for sharing your thoughts with us truly anvesha is a student thank you everyone for giving me this wonderful opportunity thank you so much anvesha anvesha indeed is a student with a clear goal of making our living more sustainable she is confident and brimming with ideas anvesha is a promising young leader and is sure going to bring a positive change in our future society thank you so much anvesha Thank Moving you. on our next inspirational story is from Miss Mohini Arora. She is a resident of Jammu and is currently pursuing her graduate course in journalism from Bharti College Delhi University. She is an active participant of the Young Reporters for the Environment program and she is also a part of a debating society named as Chintan. Miss Mohini my first question to you is what motivated you to take part in the YRE program? so let's be very frank in our routine lives majorly in youth's life we don't really care about the environment or the climate change but when the temperature rises we start we just go on to blame global warming but not its root cause so ultimately what we are looking for or we are asking for is a magic wand which can correct all the mistakes done by us humans from past many 100 or 200 years this is what 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 really motivated me to pour my heart out in words and hence i participated in the article writing competition majorly my motivation was just to write about the need of sustainable environment or the pollution problem we have but even the hypocritical nature of people 
then I got the opportunity to participate in this competition and hence my emotions to contribute something to the society was fulfilled. And I guess that's how one should move forward by thinking about the intensity a normal phenomenon can have at large. And then motivation will no longer be a distant star. And that's pretty much it, I guess. Thank you. Moving on to my next question. As part of the Young Reporters for Environment program, how will you encourage the youth to be a young reporter? So what I feel, the youth, I believe, is very selfish. One needs to give them weight in order to get their work done. This has been an evolution among people. I don't know why, but it has been. But what I feel is in order to encourage youth, we must keep in mind the material as well as the psychological aspects. Material aspects can be rewards like trophies, certificates, any recognition, but the other one goes for personality formation, widening the horizon of thinking and the capability of transforming thoughts into a presentable form as you have the categories like article, photography, videography. The interpersonal approach works every time and I'm sure it works for everyone. I have tried this and you must have tried this as well. We need to talk to as much people as we can. They can be our friends or even our acquaintances. We just need to let them know the benefits of participating in competitions like organized by Viary. Talking to people personally is always a good idea as it makes our idea socially relevant and works appropriately enough. So that's it. Thank Thanks. you so much, Mohini, for sharing your frank review. Last but not the least, we have an inspirational story from Dr. Chetna Bharatwaj. Dr. Chetna is a biology teacher and a coordinator of the Eco Schools and the YRE program at Delhi Public School, Nadarpur. Dr. Chetna has over 15 years of teaching experience, ranging from PGT science in multiple schools to lecturer in postgraduate college. She is a nature loving personality and has a gardening as a hobby. She has been raising awareness about environmental issues among all her students and associates. Welcome, ma'am. And here is my first question to you. Can you please share about your experience working with the Eco Schools program and the YRE program India? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Janvi. Good evening to one and all present here. I, on behalf of Delhi Public School, Nadargul Management Principal, and all my Eco Warriors would like to thank esteemed members of Team CEE, Eco Schools, and YRE for providing this platform to share our experience through Eco School journey. The plans to protect the component of environment are, in fact, plans to protect humans. Appreciating this saying, Eco School program took off with outstanding spirit in Delhi Public School, Radhargul. It involved everyone to take activities and programs which aim at uh, aim to create awareness about uh, environment. Uh, about my experience, like the most uh, important key part of our journey was the students' involvement. As children from each class were entailed in the team, the school has been conducting so many eco activities since inception. Like for example, in uh, 2016, when our school started, there was only one tree in 16 acres of big land. So school made many efforts and conducted many activities to make the campus green. But adopting eco school program was definitely a road uh, that led us towards more environmental awareness, creating community links and become more sustainable. And most importantly, it has empowered our students to become agents of change by leading the change within, within our school. Uh, the previous year 2021-22 20, uh, can be marked as momentous as students not only joined eco activities but also fostered the green movement at school. We took three themes, biodiversity, waste and healthy living. Under the theme biodiversity, uh, students enjoyed making the school grounds more insect, bird and butterfly friendly. They put bird feeders, bird boxes, uh, different kinds of saplings were planted and all these men, uh, activities were monitored and we found remarkable increase in wildlife within our school ground. As we all know that sparrow is one of the endangered species, our school made efforts to bring it back also. So it was the finest task as uh, we have little birds flying around in the school corridors and classrooms now. 
Working for the theme waste, students led recycling project defines our success. The lessons taught on uh, uh, waste reduction are still continued and they have become integral part of life. One more achievement is that, that we were able to reduce 70% of waste going to landfills from our school. Apart from these eco activities, our uh, school got opportunity to showcase our work at global level also. School submitted a report on whole school approach being used in practice to engage with SDG 4 to Dutch Ministry of Climate Policy, which got published as a part of the WSC International Conference organized in Netherlands. Uh, this report highlights the vision of the school that is in simple words, academic excellence, uh, integration of art, music and dance, integration of values and physical well-being of students with giving children an international-minded approach to areas concerned in the globe. Adoption of Cambridge uh, curriculum to our uh, school to pre-primary branch is also another step in this direction. We have mainly two wings. Uh, first is green culture and another is uh, community service um, initiatives. So eco-school, YRE, fair trade, STDs, all these programs taken in school are in sync with the vision of the school. One more, uh, our school is associated with YRE program also, and uh, under which our, uh, we collaborated with uh, Chateaubriand Junior High School France. Both the schools worked together and exchanged ideas on common theme, plastic pollution, and how we can reduce at our level. This international program provided our students an opportunity to expose and open themselves for, to the culture of the partner school, and they learned that or realized that the common environmental issues are global issues and they can be resolved only when they join hands together. So we can see the impact of these all activities too on the students also. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. Moving on to my next question. What challenges did you face during the implementation of both the programs and how did you overcome that? Yet, uh, we faced many challenges like uh, motivation of community. It was very difficult to motivate some uh, like a nearby community. Then sometimes budget restraints also to initiate the program and initiate the activities. Weather conditions also, failure of projects. Sometimes what we planned, we could not get it. And top of all that COVID situation, but simply uh, with the, like slowly uh, by uh, proper planning, we overcame these uh, challenges. Like uh, when schools were uh, shut down because of COVID lo lockdown, we took help from our gardener and security staff to flourish our vegetable garden and saplings, what we planted. Even students took handprint actions from the um, home only. That's truly wonderful. And my last question for you is, what kind of a change have you observed in your students while implementing this program? Uh, yeah, definitely, I would say that Eco School has benefited our school in making uh, our students more responsible, more aware, and more involved. And it has been wonderful to see the impact of activities which are carried out under Eco School program. They worked continuously to raise awareness of reducing waste and conserve uh, biodiversity, biodiversity by involving the whole school community. Even parents also have observed that their child had learned new skills and adopted a new behavior uh, for uh, litter handling, segregation of waste, healthy food habits, recycling. Even they suggest their parents to switch off their uh, car engine when they are at traffic lights. So these tiny, tiny uh, impacts or these uh, changes, we can see that yes, uh, we, have, we have brought some difference in the children's mind. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, thank ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. And I want to say one more thing that uh, with all, with the help of our students, parents, team, staff, we are able to secure this uh, prestigious Green Flag Award. And these kind of activities will be like, will go on. This award is just one part of our responsibility to prepare our students for a sustainable future. Thank you, Eco School. Thank you, Vyari. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much all for enlightening us. And yes, it is important to imbibe the knowledge of the environment and its conservation in the young age. 
by including environmental studies as a subject in schools, we can make coming generation more sensitized and encourage them to find innovative solutions and methods for the way ahead in order to protect our nature. Thank you all panelists for encouraging reflection. I would like to um, thank Anushri and our guest speaker for the day. Over to you, Anushri. Uh, thank you, Mansi, ma'am. It is an honor to invite our guest speaker for the day, Mr. Kunal Gadvi. Kunal Gadvi is a graduate in chemistry and postgraduate in clinical research from MG Science College, Ahmedabad. He has nine years of experience in sustainable infrastructure projects, special economic zones, special investment region, state industrial policy, vibrant Gujarat summit, entrepreneurship programs. Currently, he is working as section officer in climate change department, Sachivale, government of Gujarat, for holistic state-sponsored policy mitigation and adaptation of climate change. We will welcome you, sir, and the floor is yours now. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Anushri Upadhyay ji, uh, Janvi Arora ji, Utsa uh, Modi ji, and uh, Khushbu ji, who invited me uh, for this felicitation program of the Eco Schools and Vyari. I'm so blessed and so uh, honored to, uh, to connect with uh, more than 133 participants uh, for such events. So the basically environment and the climate change is actually happening as climate change is real. And uh, the thing is, we at the government of Gujarat has initiated the department since uh, year 2009 for the dedicated uh, for the environment conservation and the climate change. We do have a uh, other line department with us and we are working together for the betterment of the environment and the climate change. But we also have some schemes as I have also observed that some participants and some uh, my panel member has uh, uh, rightly uh, observed and said about the syllabus uh, on uh, climate change and syllabus about the environment. We officially uh, from the climate change department has consulted the agriculture department and the education department. And we are now moving ahead to encourage and to include climate change as a subject from the standard five to standard 12. So it is a very phenomenal activities and everything which uh, media covers or uh, the institutions and uh, administrations are talking about climate change is a not a fancy, it's a not a trendy, it's a real, it's a reality, and there is an amazing career out of it. We as a human being should uh, care about environment we live in. We should not go after the only money, but care about the environment and make a career out of it. Uh, in government of Gujarat, uh, we have initiated uh, first of all, as there is a horrible picture we keep seeing uh, from our media, and it is a reality that uh, due to global warming, the ice age, uh, the ice are now melting, there is a temperature rising, everything is there. And there is a, a phenomenon called the carbon sinking, and there is a phenomenon called the carbon capture. So we are moving ahead, it, but we need to have some framework to do it. So we need to make industry responsible. We make to include education institutes, uh, include universities to move ahead with us. And we need to give them a administrative and budgetary uh, provision support. So it, it can be happen. It, it should not be a, uh, in a lecture. It should not be only in a motivational speech, but it should be on a ground. It should be a reality. So what we uh, do in our department that we are line up with the, we already submitted our state action taken plan for the climate change department to the uh, honorable government of India, which includes so many, uh, you may say the diversity such as agriculture, there is a climate change, there is a sea level rising, there is endangered species, there is a green jobs. So we are, see climate change is a very global issue and it's, we cannot measure in a tangible things. We cannot say that uh, megawatt, uh, how many megawatt or gigawatt we have produced from the renewable energy and we can now uh, change the climate. So it is not the phenomena. The phenomenon is intangible in nature. The sea level rising is very intangible in nature. And we are here uh, for the global issue. It's not a state issue, though we are working under the state government, but as uh, it's a national forum and CEE, that is the Center for Education, uh, 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 education, environment education is also working amazingly for the environment. 
in the allied services so i am thankful to uh, all of you to invite me so basically what we do is to we are making the impact of climate change lesser to the mankind and to the animals and to the mother earth so we are doing some tangible things such as renewable energy so we are into uh, solar energy we are into wind energy we are into small hydel and tidal energy and we are first in as far as the solar energy is concerned in the entire nation we are second as far as the uh, wind energy is concerned uh, so uh, uh, just leave this number game but we are also into the some plastic waste we form some sakhi mandals who can collect the plastic waste we just don't give them a uh, you can say the compensation out of it but we also incentivized whole phenomena to collect the plastic waste and how we make to the waste to energy by the help of the so many other another organization which works with us such as gear foundation we are working with not only state but national and international organizations such as gij and other organization we are uh, making and we are doing some awareness program across the nations we are uh, into the electric vehicles uh, we are supporting uh, electric vehicles so that we are not uh, much reliable on to fossil fuels uh, you may say fuels for to the other stops so the thing is we are kind of advisory we do about renewable energy and we are kind of advisory to the state policy either is a industrial policy or it's a some port and transport policy we our department has started in 2014 15 about the electrical vehicles for the students and now this policy has moved and switched over to the entire nation sorry uh, I'm, i'm so sorry entire the state and we have switched this policy to the port and transport department we encourage people to board a bus and not a private vehicle so there is a less pollution so we along with the uh, 19 department work for the betterment of the uh, environment and the climate change department and we are also working towards the climate change impact studies and there are so many reputed institute such as cwe such as uh, uh, ms university parol university gujarat university uh, are we are working with the scientist we are giving them a financial support as well we are uh so many other things such as biogas are there so many other schemes are there is either is tangible or intangible it is a research based or management based or there is a uh, you may say renewables uh, uh support uh, as far as the jeda is concerned gujarat energy development agency we recently got the first rank uh, for the wind energy for the year 1920 uh, so uh, here it is uh, we are working with the team uh, with the jeda with the another department such as a forest department and gujarat is the first and foremost state to initiate the climate change department as a whole the first state to initiate this dedicated department for the climate change so i welcome uh, uh, every students who are in a primary they, they are very cute little kids and they are choose this uh, they will choose uh, environment as their career so it is it is win win situation just for their uh, career also and also for the environment so many times i have seen in newspaper that uh, in uh, gpsc or upsc examination that why should we conserve our nature and the answer is because environment gives us so much benefits so this we should we should uh, uh, change the mindset we are not saving the environment just because of our selfishness we are saving the environment because we are part of it we coexist we coexist with the animals we coexist with the uh, you may say forest so we do coexist and we uh, will do uh, with the, so much sustainability we are here to encourage young scientists we are encourage here uh, to uh, uh, we are here to encourage everyone who are working for the climate change and the environment uh, with me uh, there is a shwetal shah who is a technical advisor to the state government is much into the climate uh, change and impact studies and very uh, his service is very invaluable and very important to the state he also join us and uh, give insights very important insights to the uh, young minds of the uh, young uh, that you are school um, may i say the eco school and why are uh, in virtual platform uh, thank you kunal bhai and thank you ce for uh, having us with all of you today evening and i really congratulate all the schools and all the 
uh, young champions for uh, making something impactful for their own uh, environment, for their own school, for their own house. So what Kunal Bhai has said that we have uh, policies and programs to support the climate action at the subnational level, at the state level, and also uh, in sync with what our Honorable Prime Minister has said in the Panchamrit commitment of India. However, as an individual, what I can do? Uh, so that is the main thing for the student. So uh, today I would like to give a message to each and every uh, student and also the teacher so that uh, they can encourage students in four things. So first is the tree plantation. So this is the right season. Now monsoon is coming. So even a one tree we can plant and we find the area to plant one tree, it will be very helpful to us. So uh, do the plantation activity, do uh, nurturing of the plant and uh, see them growing uh, with you in your school or uh, near your house. The second thing I would suggest that do not waste water. So as much as uh, we can do at our home, uh, while we wash our clothes or uh, we uh, use water uh, from tap, so every time we should be conscious and we should, should be judicious in using uh, the water. The third thing I would say is to conserve energy wherever you can do it at your home, at your school. So don't waste energy. It's a very precious resource for our nation. And we are quite dependent on in import of all type of energy sources. So uh, wherever you use public transport or uh, wherever you can save energy in any form, uh, do that. And fourth thing I would like to suggest today is the uh, waste segregation and waste management. So first, try to reduce the uh, generation of waste and wherever you generate waste, you please... The environment and our surrounding is not uh, degraded or uh, shall not be polluted. So as a citizen, as a responsible uh, people and as a, an educated uh, student, it is our moral responsibility uh, in, in this way to make our country more better and our future more bright. So this is uh, my uh, today's message on this platform. I would really uh, take the efforts done by all of you, uh, which is real. Thank you so much, uh, panel and CEE and Shwetal Saji uh, for their valuable insights. And I'm really thankful to you that you have uh, your give your suggestions about electricity, water, waste management, and the plantation. So that's uh, for the all from our side, from the climate change department. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Kunal sir and Shvetal sir, for your enlightening talk on the widely publicized issue of climate change. Now, your discourse beautifully corresponds with this quote penned by Jane Goodall, what you do makes a difference and you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. Kudos to you. Now, as sir already mentioned, another alarming subject under climate change is that of plastic pollution. Plastic, as we know it, is cheap, durable, can be easily molded, and does not break easily. As an integral part of our everyday life, plastic is utterly unavoidable. Now, to test your knowledge about plastics, we have an interactive poll lined up for everyone, which will be conducted by Mr. Utsav Modi, who's the focal point for the Tide Turners Plastic Challenge. I would request Utsav, sir, to take over now. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Hello, uh, thank you, Anushri. And uh, I, I would like to say first the congratulation to all the winners of uh, Eco Schools and the Wiry. And also congratulate all the participants who participated in the competitions and uh, uh, and the join uh, today with uh, us uh, as a panelist as a attendees. So may I please have a poll? Uh, may I please have a poll? for the attendees. 
uh, as Anushree and the, as uh, Sir rightly said that the, we, we, we are uh, facing a very uh, huge problem in the world and a huge problem in uh, India that uh, single use plastic is like uh, very common and we can find anywhere in, in our nearest location in our nearest community and that is uh, what we are supposed to uh, do an action again against it and we are also uh, supposed to do any and a very insightful uh, knowledge we should have to uh, what what the single use plastic is so we have a, a poll question to all of you that uh, uh, you, you may know now better know about the single use plastic and how how it works and uh, how a single person or, or individual can do do about it so I would like uh, all, all the panelists, all the attendees to join this poll with us and let, let us know like how, uh, this, uh, what the facts do you know about the single use plastic? So the first, uh, my first question is uh, on an average, how long is a single uh, bag or a single use plastic or a polythene bag is used by a person before uh, we just go, uh, we, uh, we just throw it away. So the, the, ans uh, the options are like uh, uh, 12 minutes, one hour, one day or a, a one week. So uh, these are like, uh, this is uh, my first question to all of you. Uh, I may request all of you to, to join this uh, poll and uh, be, be interactive uh, with the poll. And so we, know, we may know better about the single use plastic and we also uh, know about the facts about it. Uh, the second question is uh, which single use plastic do you use uh, the most in your daily life? So the options would be the polythene uh, carry bags, uh, food cutlery, plastic packaging, plastic water bottles. Uh, my third question is why single-use plastics are a concern? So we, we uh, normally we talk about the single-use plastic and uh, not the other uh, things uh, available in a market or available uh, nearest to us, but we only talk about the single-use plastic. So why we are talking about it? So the options for that are the quantity generated, uh, the degradation take Lo, uh, takes long time, then the proper disposal and the recycling system is not in a place or it's a convenient to use. So these are like my options to all of you. Uh, the, my, uh, my fourth and the last question is, uh, what are some of the solutions to resolve these problems? So it can be, uh, we can ban the use of the SUPs or uh, we may ban uh, or we may, recycle, uh, we may recycle them or we may stop production or we may sensitize the consumers. So these are all my the questions to all of you to, so I may request all of you to participate in the uh, polls. Uh, you, may, uh, you may see the questions uh, in your screen. I also request uh, uh, ma'am, teachers and sirs all, uh, and also students, those who are available and that uh, uh, at here right now. So I may request all of you to join this uh, uh, fact, uh, polls on the facts about the single use plastics. We are getting a good responses uh, from the uh, attendants and the, from the panelists as well. All participants are requested to answer as we have only 43% of the participation received in this poll. So I request you all to join this poll and answer the questions. We have just four answers that you're supposed to answer. And this poll will uh, remain here for one more minute and will declare a result. I'll just go through the, all the questions. The first question, which you can see over here that on an average, how long is plastic bag? So uh, we can see that uh, we have multiple or uh, we, we, we have received multiple responses from the participants that uh, it can take al almost one day or it can take almost one week uh, or, a, or a 12 minutes. But I'll, I'll share the results once we, once we finish the uh, uh, time limit of the poll that what is the correct answer for that or like how many times or how much uh, the time we are consuming uh, for a single use plastic. So let me just wait for a few more minutes and I request all of you to join this uh, uh, poll on uh, facts about the single use plastic. So we may know more about the uh, SUPs, we may know more about the uh, their, uh, their usage, their uh, uh, wastage and their degradation and how, how it, uh, uh, it damages to, the, to our environment, to, to our, our surroundings. So I may request uh, uh, to end the poll, please. Are 
Hello. Oh, okay. So uh, now I'm, I'm uh, uh, now the poll has been uh, finished. So now you can see the answers over here on a screen. That the first question is, uh, as you uh, see over there, that how long is a plastic bag used by the person before being thrown away? The correct answer would be the twelve minutes. Only 12 minutes we are using a single use plastic before we just throw it away. So that is what where the problem begins because we use it for the only 12 minutes and we just throw it like for almost 400 years or 450 years. So this is where uh, the uh, campaign uh, is designed for uh, and, and this is where we need to look. Uh, we need to look on it. So the correct answer for that is a 12 minute. Now, which single use plastic do you use the most in your daily life? Of course, it is a polythene carry bag, which you can see those who, who go outside to, to bring the vegetables, to bring a mall, uh, to go to a mall, uh, to bring anything. So basically, first thing which we can, uh, uh, which we can think that that is the polythene carry bags. And that is why uh, we need to think about it because the polythene carry bags are like, uh, you know, the Kabadiwala, Pastiwala, they don't bring it, uh, they don't take it. Because we can uh, sell them, uh, we can sell them a plastic bottles. We can sell them, or we can sell any other things uh, also made from the plastic. But not we can we cannot sell them a polythene carry bag. So that is where the problem begins. Because we are using the most, uh, we are using most polythene carry bags, and we do not have any alternative, or we don't we do not have any recycling option for that. So this is where the problem becomes, and that is uh, what the bags goes to the uh, rivers and rivers to the oceans and uh, where the uh, ocean biodiversity or the marine uh, marine uh, life uh, is eating and uh, and from where it gets damaged so this is what we need to think about then why single use plastics are concerns of course there is no correct answer or no specific answer for that but this is this is what we need to look on it because it also takes a degradation uh, it takes so much time to degrade it, uh, of course, the quantity is being generated is tremendous that uh, we should think about it because as of now, whatever the plastics we see over here on us, uh, on our oceans, still like 50 persons of the plastics still available on, on, a, uh, on a earth right now, uh, whenever they were, uh, whenever they were like uh, invented uh, uh, 50 years back, still we have like 50 persons of the plastic currently available. And that is where uh, the quantity is being, uh, why the, uh, and that is where the, uh, the major issue of it. So there are multiple options for the third questions. Uh, and uh, uh, this is why, uh, just to make you aware about the uh, single use plastics. And that's why I keep this question, uh, question as a poll. And the last uh, option is, uh, what are some of the solutions to resolve this problem? There are, uh, there are multiple options. Uh, we can ban the use of the SUPs. Uh, we can recycle them. We can stop the production. We can sensitize uh, consumer. So there are um, few or many or multiple options available, but what are the options which we can do as an individual, which we can do as a, uh, our own or uh, which we can do as a school we, uh, and as a student or as a teacher, then we have a very good uh, initiative by the UNEP, United Nations Environment Program, uh, and that is a tight and a plastic challenge. So may I now request uh, Anushri, uh, my colleague Anushri, to to know uh, to give a, a brief knowledge about the Titan Plastic Challenge and let us know like how we can be a part of it and how we can do do about it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So now we know about how the single-use plastic pollution is drastically affecting marine life and surroundings, and because of the same as Kartike sir mentioned before, the government is. Uh, also taking measures like banning certain single-use plastics such as ice cream spoons, polystyrene products, and many more. But you must be wondering, how can you help in creating change? So for that, we have an international platform where you can take part as well as take actions towards single-use plastics. UNEP came up with a campaign, Tight Turner's Plastic Challenge, through implementing partners CEE and WWF in India. The objective of this campaign is to spread awareness and action on single-use plastic waste. This campaign is for students, youths, teachers, and educators aged between 11 to 35 years. Benefit of the challenge is that registered participants will not only receive the international certificate from UNEP, but also will get an opportunity to interact with international platforms. And also you will be able to join the National Youth Summit happening every year. So I hope you will all participate in this challenge. The detail of this challenge is already visible to you on the screen. If you have any further questions, you may write to us. Over to Janvi now. 
Thank you so much, Anushri. With this, I would like to propose the formal vote of thanks. What an eventful evening this has been for us. On behalf of the Center for Environment Education, I would like to give our heartfelt thanks to our esteemed speakers for the day, Shri Kartike Sarabhai sir, Ms. Madhvi Joshi ma'am, Ms. Preeti Kanojia ma'am, Mr. Kunal Gardi sir, Mr. Shwetal Shah, who spent their valuable time and graced us with their presence today. I am certain your thoughts and opinions have enlightened our minds and inspired us remarkably. But, uh, a huge thanks to also our panelists for gracing us with their presence today and their enlightening opinions on the topic. A special thanks to our wonderful team, which is present on the screen here, Ms. Khushbu Shah, Ms. Pansi Shah, Mr. Utsav Modi, Mr. Shreya Sajeevan, Ms. Anushri Upadhyay, and the CWE team for their concerted efforts. Next, I would like to thank our participant teachers and students who have been actively involved in all of CWE's programs and encouraging the students to take part in all their activities. Lastly, I would like to thank our audience for young leaders for being so wonderful. With this, I, Jahan V. Arora, am signing off. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. All the panelists are requested to stay back for a photo. Thank you. All panelists are requested to turn on their camera. For now, sir. Okay, uh, ready everyone? Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, we can leave now. We can leave. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.